Chris. God bless you. Amen. All right, if you have your Bibles with you this evening, if you'll turn uh, to the book of Genesis, if you will, the book of Genesis, chapter number 42 for our text. Uh, we'll pick up reading in verse number 1, and we'll read down through verse number 5, and then we'll just look at some select verses out of this chapter. Uh, uh, when we first started this uh, study, if you remember, uh, we basically read about four or five chapters out of the book of Genesis to, to set the tone and the introduction for this, and now we're going back and looking at some, some truths that we find in these, uh, in these chapters. Uh, but uh, uh, Genesis chapter number 42, uh, let's pick up reading in uh, verse number 1. And then we'll read down through verse number 5 and pray, and then we'll look at this and some other verses here in chapter 42. Now when Jacob saw there was corn in Egypt, Jacob said unto his sons, Why do you look one upon another? Uh, and he said, Behold, I have heard that there is corn in Egypt. Get you down thither, and buy for us from thence, that we may live and not die. And Joseph's ten brethren went down to by corn in Egypt, but Benjamin, Joseph's brother, Jacob sent not with his brethren, for he said, Lest peradventure mischief befall, uh, befall him. And the sons of Israel came to buy corn among those that came, uh, that came, for the famine was in the land of Canaan. Now let's bow our heads and stop and ask the Lord to bless the reading of the scriptures tonight. Uh, dear Heavenly Father, Lord, we are thankful for this day that you made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. And Lord, we are thankful, dear Lord, for the very breath of life you give us to enjoy this day, for the health to be here this evening. And Lord, as we look to the bread of life tonight, I pray that you feed our spiritual souls. Lord, give us spiritual food from heaven tonight to help strengthen the inner man, to help us in our daily walk with thee, and that we would learn something tonight, dear Lord. Uh, to help us to be a light and to be a witness and to tell others about Jesus Christ. And Lord, I pray that you'd help me tonight as I preach. Heavenly Father, give me that anointing of the Holy Ghost to preach with clarity of thought and clarity of speech. And Lord, help me to be able to preach the truth in love tonight. And Heavenly Father, if there's one here this evening that does not know, know Thee as Lord and Savior, Lord, I pray that you convict their heart of sin and judgment to come and draw them unto Yourself tonight, and that they come forward and be saved before it's eternally too late. And Lord, we just thank you and praise you for what you've done. We thank you and praise you for what you're going to do. For it's in Jesus' name we do ask and pray these things. And amen. You know, as we look here at this account, uh, there's a famine in the land. And of course, we know Joseph now has been placed second in command. He's in a position of authority. Uh, but there's a famine in the land that's going to cause his brethren to come down into Egypt. And let me tell you something. Nothing happens by chance with the Lord. This is a divine appointment that God has set up to reunite uh, Joseph with his brethren. Uh, you know, uh, I don't know about you, but now there's times maybe I'm at Walmart uh, or at a department store, or grocery store, and you run into somebody and you certainly hadn't talked to that person in a long period of time. You certainly hadn't prearranged the meeting there. You just happened to run into one another. And you sit down and have some fellowship with them and talk with them, and you tell them as you... Depart. Well, it's been good to see you today. I, I hadn't planned on this, but it's been good to see you. That didn't happen by accident or by chance. That was a divine appointment of the Lord. And nothing happens by chance with the Lord. He is a divine and happen, everything happens right on His schedule, amen, amen, and right during His time frame, if you will. And so uh, uh, Joseph was able to interpret this dream to Pharaoh, which caused him to be placed to... Uh, in this position of authority because he told him, hey, there's going to be seven years of abundance. And after that, there's going to be seven years of famine and uh, years of abundance. We need to be stockpiling. We need to be planning for the famine that's coming. And beloved, that's what we need to do as, as children of God. If God's blessed you during a, a season of abundance in your life right now, hey, rejoice and thank God for it. Uh, but I know some people that thinks it's a sin uh, to hang on to money. As soon as they get it, they've got to burn through it. And not only do they spend what they made, they spend more than what God's given them. And they get into a thing called debt, and they become in, uh, enslaved and in bondage to the debt that they've incurred. And then when famine comes their way, they're not able to repay that debt. And so, beloved, uh, if God's blessing you abundantly now, you need to lay up some in the storehouse because it's not if the famine comes, it's when the famine and hard times come, uh, you'll be prepared uh, to take care of that. 
And uh, beloved, uh, uh, you can rejoice and thank God for meeting your need and be a good steward of what He's given you. Uh, but some, uh, they'll, uh, they'll take the increase, they'll take it and waste it abundantly, and then when the famine comes their way, they'll blame God. Well, He's not meeting my need. Well, you know, think about all the frivolous and wasteful income that you've wasted when the abundance was your way. You can't blame God for that. You're the one that went out and wasted it. So don't blame Him for the demise that you're in. And so anyway, uh, uh, God will cause us to realize our need. And here we see that uh, uh, Jacob, uh, there's famine in the land. And I love the first verse here in chapter 42, verse number 1. says, Now when Jacob saw that there was corn in Egypt, Jacob said unto his sons, Why do you look one upon another? You know, why are you sitting here looking at yourselves, staring at one another? Uh, there's a message with that verse within itself. Uh, it looks to me like if there's a famine in the land, instead of sitting around feeling sorry for yourself and looking at one another what you're going to be doing, I've had my hands to the plow. I've been trying to plant some food. Or I, of course, I know that they didn't have Facebook back then. They didn't have social media back then. But I've been out traveling trying to find some food to bring into the family. Amen. And that's the problem with a lot of us today as, as Christians. A typical Baptist, we want to sit around, well, who's going to do this? Who's going to do that? Hey, why don't we all just get busy? Amen. Amen. Yeah. Now, but they're sitting around looking, well, hey, you're the oldest. You need to go do it. Well, you're the youngest. You've got more energy than anybody. You need to be out doing something. Quit looking at one another. It's about time, you know, we need to look at ourselves and what we're doing for the Lord instead of looking at everybody else and what they're doing or what they're not doing. And that's maybe another message for another day, another time. Uh, but I love that verse when I go through and read that. And he says, Behold, I've heard that there is corn in Egypt. You know, I guess that's uh, uh, the way things uh, were back then is word of mouth. Amen. Uh, word of mouth kind of reminds me of uh, uh, that Andy Griffith episode uh, uh, when uh, Howard said, you know, there's three forms of communication. Uh, there's telegram, telephone, and tell Floyd. You know? <laughs> Uh, three forms of communication. And I guess back then, that's the way people found out things was smoke signal or word of mouth, I guess. Uh, but he heard that there's corn down in Egypt, amen. And so, get you down uh, hither, uh, quit, you know, uh, get up, get busy, uh, get down to Egypt hither and buy for us from thence that we may, uh, that we may live and not die. But so it kind of sounds to me that the pantry's running pretty low and pretty thin. We need to get busy about this thing. So get up, guys. Get down out to Egypt and bring us back some food or we're going to perish. And so we get here to verse 3. And Joseph's ten brethren went down to buy corn in Egypt. I, that tells me right there they were Baptists. If you send ten young boys down to Egypt to buy some corn, you plan on doing some eating with those ten guys bringing that food back. You plan on stocking up on the storehouse. Amen. And so now verse number 4, But Benjamin, Joseph's brother Jacob, said not with his brethren, for he said, Lest peradventure mischief befall him. There's a reason he thought that, because God had a plan. We know the story in the future he's going to send for him later on. Uh, but uh, nothing happens, uh, again, by accident with the Lord. There's a specific yeah. reason uh, that Joseph felt it, or, or excuse me, Jacob felt this way at this time and determined to leave Benjamin behind. And notice here in verse number 5, And the sons of Israel came to buy corn among those that came, for the famine was in the land of Canaan. You know, sometimes God will allow famine, uh, if you will, a dry season to come into our life simply to remind us, uh, remind us of our need for Him. Yeah. Uh, beloved, uh, when you go through and you read the Old Testament, and the New Testament a lot, but you, know, you see this... Uh, uh, a lot in the Old Testament, especially in regard to the Israelites and to the people of Israel, uh, they would worship God for a season, and then uh, and then they would begin to stray and forget God, and then they would take their eyes off the Lord, and then they'd commit spiritual adultery or spiritual idolatry, however you want to phrase it, and uh, they would uh, start to worship other gods, and they would forget God, the one who fought for them, the one who provided for them, the one who delivered them, and God would cause judgment or famine to come in the line in the, the land to cause them to remember His goodness, remember His protection, remember His provision. 
And when they remembered what God Jehovah had done for them, it caused repentance to take place in their heart and it caused them to turn from worshiping these gods that were made with man's hands to turn back to God Jehovah, the one true and living God. And when they did that, when they remembered and it caused repentance and they would set their eyes back upon God, He would heal the land every single time. But when you go through and read the Old Testament, it's like a, a broken record. It happened time and time and time again. And you would say, you, you, you go through and you read, read them and you say, uh, read, read the Scriptures and you want to say to these people, what is wrong with you? Can't you see the error of your way? Well, be careful about casting stones because we are the same way. Amen. Yep. And that's why God allows things to come into our life as wake-up calls and as reminders that we need to get our eyes back on the Lord and get, a, uh, get, get our heart back right, if you will, with Him. And so that's why sometimes things happen and God uh, allows things to happen in our life to realize that we truly need Him. You know, uh, 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 you know, blessings, uh, we all want the blessings of the Lord, but be careful about taking those blessings for granted and getting accustomed to, uh, to them. Uh, when God blesses us with things, we ought to be thankful each and every day for the blessings that God bestows upon us. And we certainly don't need to take them for granted. And we certainly don't need to stop thanking God and praising His name for the blessings that He gives us each and every day. Uh, because, uh, beloved, uh, if we stop remembering, if we stop praising, if we stop thanking, God can remove those blessings from us. And they're like, oh my goodness, where did they go? And we need to remember, you know what? We're not, not, we're not worthy of those blessings. We're not deserving those blessings. But God, because of His faithfulness and the love that He has toward us, He bestows those blessings upon us. And beloved, He truly is worthy of our praise, of our remembrance, uh, uh, and our thanks. Amen. And so, uh, the Bible tells us in Psalm chapter 40, verse number 17, But I am poor and needy. I don't know about you, but that describes me to a T. Uh, poor and needy. Yet the Lord thinketh upon me. You know, man's respect or person. Uh, sometimes people look at, uh, uh, look at uh, the, 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 the neighborhood that you live in. They look at the vehicle that you drive. They look at your clothes. And beloved, if you don't meet a certain social status with them, they won't speak to you. They won't have nothing to, to do with you. I remember one time I was at a social event and there were some people huddled up together and I uh, uh, sat down at the t uh, table adjacent to them and they asked me where I worked at and I told them where I worked at and I could see the expression on their face because when you work in such and such place, you're not good enough for us. And so I wasn't going to get an invitation to be part of the Esquire Club, you know, because I didn't meet their qualifications, didn't meet their standard. And they wouldn't talk to me. Uh, they would not have fellowship with me. And I tried to strike up a conversation, and they looked at me like, how dare you even speak to us? You know, because of where you work at and where you live and the type of vehicle that you drive. Now, man's a respecter of a person, but aren't you glad that God's not that way? Amen. And beloved, uh, God doesn't just think upon the rich. He thinks upon the poor and everyone in between. Amen. Amen. And notice here the good news. Yet the Lord thinketh upon me. God's not interested in your financial status. He's not interested <laughs> in where you went to school at. But He certainly is interested in your heart and your soul. Amen. And so, yet the Lord thinketh upon me, Thou art my help and my deliverer, make no tarry, go my God. And so we see here in these verses, God causes us to realize our need. And then God reminds us, you know, of our deeds. He reminds us of our actions. Of beloved, of some to keep us from doing some actions, and some to provoke us to do other actions, depending on the circumstance and what's take place, uh, taking place uh, in our life. And notice here now in verses 6 through 9, and Joseph was the governor over the land, and he it was that sold all the people of the uh, uh, sold to all the people of the land. And Joseph's brethren came and bowed down themselves before him with their faces to the earth. And Joseph saw his brethren, and he knew them, 
but made himself strange unto them, and spake roughly unto them, and he said unto them, Whence come ye? And they said, From the land of Canaan to buy food. And Joseph knew his brethren, but they knew not him. And notice verse number 9, And Joseph remembered the dreams which he dreamed of them, and said to them, You are spies to see the nakedness of the land you are come. He remembered the dream. He knew why, he, uh, why they were there. And of course he said, No, you're spies. He wasn't going to reveal himself to them just yet. And so he accused them of being spies. But this caused Joseph to remember the dream that he dreamed some time ago. And he remembered now, you know what? The very thing that God said was going to take place is taking place right before my very eyes. And beloved, uh, well, we're blessed to have the infa infallible, inerrant, God-breathed Word of God at our fingertips. And beloved, uh, they, God has said that there are going to be things take place before Jesus Christ returns for the church. And beloved, these things are happening right in front of our very eyes. God's Word is unfolding right in front of our very eyes every single day. And so uh, 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 God reminded Joseph of his dreams. And you know what? Joseph's like, you know what? Now I know why things are unfolding the way that they are. God has brought me here. He's made it unto good. And His word is true. It's unfolding right before my very eyes. And guess what? I'm in the place where God wants me to be. This has happened by His divine design. And uh, beloved, uh, uh, sometimes God reminds us of our deeds. Uh, beloved, that we need to be about uh, good works, not to get salvation, not to keep salvation, but as evidence and fruit of salvation. And so, uh, beloved, uh, and God warns us from His Word to be careful about things that we've done in our past, not to do them again, not to make the same mistake. Uh, 1 Corinthians uh, chapter 4, verse number 5 tells us, Therefore judge nothing before the time until the Lord come, who, will both, uh, who both will bring to light the hidden things of darkness and will make manifest the counsels of the heart, and then shall every man have praise of God. Uh, let me tell you something. Uh, be careful what you do. Uh, be careful what you say. You can hide it and conceal it uh, from man, but you can't hide it from God. And the hidden counsels of the heart, one day God is going to reveal and make known to light uh, and bring it to light. And everybody's going uh, to know the true intent of your heart. Uh, Luke chapter 12 verses 2 through 4 tells us, For there is nothing covered that shall not be revealed. Now that's a sobering statement, is it not? Uh, listen, you can go out and you can bury stuff in the lake. You can go bury stuff in the backyard. You can go uh, uh, hide your hard drive or smash up your hard drive. But at the end of the day, God's going to reveal everything. There's nothing that's hidden that's not going to be uncovered. Now, beloved, if, we, if, if our hearts and minds were truly uh, governed by that truth every single day, our lives would be transformed. All of our lives would be different if we would remind ourselves of this truth on a daily basis. For there is nothing covered that shall not be revealed, neither hid that shall not be known. Therefore, whatsoever you have spoken in darkness shall be heard in the light. And that which you have spoken in the ear and closet shall be proclaimed upon the housetops. And I say to you, my friends, be not afraid of them that kill the body, and after that have no more that they can do. And he goes on to warn, but fear him that can cast both body and soul into hell. And so, beloved, uh, uh, be careful uh, in regard to your actions, trying to hide them. You can hide them from me, and you can hide them from your spouse, and you can hide them from your co-workers, but you can't hide these things from the Lord. Amen? You can't hide them from the Lord. 1 mm -hmm. Corinthians chapter 3, verse number 13 tells us, Every man's work shall be made manifest, for the day shall declare it, because it shall be revealed by fire, and the fire shall try every, every man's work of what sort it is. Of course, this is uh, talking about the judgment seat of Christ or the beam of seat of Christ. You and I, as children of God, uh, we, when we stand before the Lord in judgment, we will not stand to give an account of our sin. That penalty, that price, that wage was paid for by Jesus Christ on the cross of Calvary. So we'll not stand in judgment of our sin, but we will stand in judgment for our service and stewardship 
And beloved, moreover, it's required in stewards that a man be found faithful. And beloved, God wants us to be involved in His work. He wants us to be good stewards. He wants us to be involved. And so, beloved, we're going to give an account of our stewardship when we stand before the Lord. And our works are going to be tried by fire, not our salvation. Uh, we won't lose our salvation there. But, beloved, you can lose rewards at the being of seat of Christ. Uh, so, uh, beloved, that's why it's important for us uh, 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 to do the will of God in their life and to be obedient to His Word. Acts chapter uh, uh, 1, verse number 24, And they prayed and said, Thou, Lord, which knowest the hearts of all men, show whether these two thou hast chosen. Uh, the thing that I want us to glean the truth from this verse is, The Lord, which knowest the hearts of all men. Uh, beloved, God knows your heart tonight, whether or not you're real, whether or not you're sincere, whether or not you're genuine in your worship and in your service and your desire to live for God. He knows your heart tonight. Amen. Uh, beloved, on the outward appearance, that's all I can go by. Uh, a lot of Christians today on the surface, on the outward appearance, they're saying the right thing. They're doing the right thing. They're going through the right motions. But are they doing it for the right reason. Are they doing it because they genuinely love God and want to serve God and glorify God with their life? Or are they doing it because they're in a position of their local church and it's expected of them and so they're just going through the routine of it? Are they doing it because they want to get the preacher off their back and so they go through and they do the things that they do because the preacher's been on to them because of the position that they have in the church? <laughs> No, I hope you're doing it because you love God. Amen. And you want to glorify Him with your, uh, with your uh, uh, life. And so, uh, uh, beloved, uh, God knows your heart this evening. Psalm chapter 139, verses 1 through 6 tells us, O Lord, Thou hast searched me and known me. Thou knowest my downsetting and my uprising, and Thou understandest my fault afar off. Thou compass me, compass me my, my path, and I lying down and are acquainted with all my ways. For there is not a word in my tongue. But lo, O Lord, Thou knowest it all together. That's a sobering thought, is it not? There's not a word in your tongue that He doesn't know. That would change some of our vocabulary and vernacular tonight, I do believe, if we would remind ourselves of that truth. Thou hast beset me behind and before and laid Thy hand upon me. Such knowledge is too wonderful for me it is high, I cannot attain to it. And of course, that ought to remind us of some other scripture. His ways are higher than our ways. His thoughts are higher than our thoughts. And so, beloved, we can't understand the mind of God. We can't know the, the mind of God, but He certainly knows us, does He yeah, not? Yeah. He knows us better than we know ourselves. Yes. Amen. And later on in Psalm 139, verses 22 through uh, 24, I hate them with a perfect hatred. I count them my enemies. Search me, O God, and know my heart. Try me and know my thoughts. And see if there be any wicked way in me. And lead me in the way everlasting. And beloved, that's the way we need to pray in regard to our own lives personally. Will the Lord reveal any wicked way in me? Lord, reveal any bad attitude. Lord, reveal any type of ignorant sin that I may be committing that's wrong that I don't know is wrong. Reveal it to me. Try my heart because I want to glorify you with all my heart and all my soul and all my mind. And beloved, that ought to be the attitude of every born-again believer. Amen. And so uh, uh, tonight, uh, God reminds us uh, of our deeds, and He certainly knows our hearts. And He wants us to always seek Him. And if we have strayed from Him, He wants us to return to Him. Notice in verses 21 and 22 here in Genesis chapter 42, uh, notice here, and they said one to another, We are verily guilty concerning our brother, and that we saw the anguish of his soul when he besought us, and we would not hear. Therefore is this distress come upon us. You know, Joseph's brethren, you know, uh-oh, the reason all of this has come about is because of what we've done to our brother. Yeah. You know, there is an immutable law in the Word of God, the law of sowing and reaping. Be not deceived, God is not mocked. For whatsoever man soweth, 
that shall he also reap. And let me tell you something, uh, uh, beloved, uh, uh, this has come back around uh, because of their actions toward Joseph, uh, uh, beloved. And, and can you imagine Joseph when they tossed him into that pit? He was crying out, what have I done? I'm your brother. I love you. And they tossed him in that pit, and originally they were going to kill him, and then end up, uh, ended up uh, selling him off into slavery. Uh, beloved, uh, let me tell you something. Be careful what you do toward others, because it has a way of coming back around. Yes, sir. Now, the world calls that karma. I call it the law of sowing and reaping from the Word of God. Yeah. And let me tell you something. If you sow the right thing, you'll reap the right thing. And if you sow the wrong thing, you'll reap the wrong thing. It's just that simple. And so, uh, uh, notice here uh, in verses 21 and 22, And they said one to another, We are verily guilty concerning our brother, and that we saw the anguish of his soul when he besought us, and we would not hear. Therefore is this distress come upon us. And Reuben answered them, saying, Speak I not unto you. Uh, do not sin against the child, and you would not hear. Therefore, behold, also his blood is required. I tried to tell you. I told you it was going to come back to haunt us. We shouldn't have done it, but you wouldn't listen. If you ever pleaded with somebody, you could see it a mile away. Their actions was going to bring harm upon them and their family. And you pleaded with them. And you cried out to them, don't do it. Don't do it. You're going to regret this. And sure enough, they went through and done it. And it came back to get them. It came back to home. And certainly that's what's taken place, uh, uh, taken place here. But you know what? Aren't you thankful that there is a way back? Uh, beloved, I believe one of the, 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 one of the most uh, 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 encouraging portions of Scripture that we can read about restoration back to God is Psalm 51. Uh, Psalm 51, uh, David, it's about his return to the Lord after he had committed his sin with Bathsheba. And David received, uh, uh, received forgiveness and restoration. From the Lord in that psalm. And let me tell you something. If, if God will do that for David, who was a liar, who was a murderer, who was an adulterer, if God can restore him, he can restore any of us here tonight. Amen. Amen. There is a way back to God. Amen. That's why 1 John 1 9 is the Bible. If we confess our sins, he is faithful just to forgive us our sins and cleanse us from all unrighteousness, you can be restored back into proper fellowship with God. Amen. Amen. And 2 Chronicles chapter 30, verses 8 and 9 tells us, Now be ye not stiff-necked as your fathers were, but yield yourselves unto the Lord, and enter into His sanctuary, which He has sanctified forever, and serve the Lord your God, that the fierceness of His wrath may turn away from you. For if you turn again unto the Lord... Your brethren and your children shall find compassion before them that, lead, uh, that led them captive so that you shall come again into this land. For the Lord your God is gracious and merciful and will not turn away His face from you if you return unto Him. Hey, that's good news. Amen. That means there's a way back. But did you notice the use of the word again? <laughs> Sounds to me like it's happened before and it's happened repetitively. Now let's take that and apply it to our lives. How many times do we mess up on a daily basis or a weekly basis that we need to return back to God and get back right with God? You know, I can imagine some of y'all last night with it being Saturday night, college football season going on, probably needed to repent and return back to God this morning and get back right with God. Amen. Isaiah chapter 55, verse number 7, verse number seven tells us, let the wicked forsake his way and the righteous man his thoughts and let him return unto the Lord and he will have mercy upon him and to our God and to our God for he will abundantly pardon. Now, I don't know about you, but I like that word pardon and I like the word forgiveness. Because yeah. yeah. uh, beloved, I'll tell you, I know, uh, uh, I know my body of flesh, I know my flesh, I know its weaknesses, and I find myself continually asking the Lord to cleanse me and to forgive me. 
Oh, Lord, don't let me develop this bad attitude. Lord, forgive me for starting to travel down that way. Forgive me for the, uh, this thought. Forgive me uh, for saying this within my heart. I may not say it out verbally, but I said it in my heart, yeah. and God knows our hearts. Mm -hmm. You may not have heard it, mm -hmm. but God did. God. And I need to ask God to restore me, and God to forgive, forgive me and to pardon me. And so... Jeremiah chapter 3, verse number 20 tells us, uh, the, verse number 22 tells us, Return, ye backsliding children, <laughs> and I will heal your backslidings. That's good news, is it not? Uh, something happens at work, you get out, out, out of the will of God. Maybe you're traveling over in Pigeon Forge. Thank God the last frog run is coming down to a close tonight. <laughs> And you're over there battling that rod run traffic. Now, let me tell you something. About 30 years ago, I didn't care to be in bumper to bumper traffic like that. There's not an amount of money you can give me, I don't think, to tempt me to go get in that mess that's over there during rod run season. But sometimes these things will cause you to get in the flesh, mm -hmm. to cause you to get out of the will of God, and to cause you to get out of fellowship with God because of your anger, because of your impatience, because of your attitude. And you start beating the steering wheel, you start mouthing off expletives, and before you know it, you're out of the will of God. But aren't you glad there's a way back? <laughs> he will abundantly pardon, He will forgive you. Return, you backsliding children, and I will heal your backslidings. Behold, we come unto thee, for thou art the Lord our God. And so, beloved, uh, uh, he wants us to return uh, to Him. He wants us to look to Him. And so, beloved, we'll continue on in the study of the life of Joseph, but that's all I have for us this evening. And so at this time, I'd like to ask the musicians to make their way to the instruments. I'd like to ask everybody here tonight, if you would, to stand, please. Everyone.